Hello and welcome back to another Doctor Who Big Finish audio drama review. In today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the second volume of the First Doctor Adventures, starring Stephen Noonan as the First Doctor, alongside Lauren Cornelius as Dodo Chaplet, in a box set entitled The Demon Song. This release is available to order now from the Big Finish website in both physical CD and digital download formats, and can also be purchased as a part of a bundle alongside a number of other Big Finish releases. So I have in fact reviewed the first volume in this series, being The Outlaws, and I absolutely loved it. I was instantly sold with the portrayals of Lauren Cornelius and Stephen Noonan as the first Doctor and Dodo, and I was really, really excited to see them return for a brand new box set. And I'm going to get out of the way instantly for the start of this review. I want to see them back again very, very soon, and I don't want to wait an entire year until the next series, which is a good sign. Despite the fact that this is Volume 2 in the First Doctor Adventures series, you do not need to have listened to The Outlaws in order to enjoy this set. Both of the episodes within this series are indeed standalone, so you can enjoy it having not listened to any other Big Finish before. So without further ado, let's delve right in with the first adventure. The Doctor and Dodo land in the 2020s for a contemporary London adventure. The first story is The Demon's Song, a two-parter being a one-hour story written by Bob Ayres. It's his first outing with Big Finish, and what a great story to start with. It's a nice change having a one-parter to open up the set, and it kind of flips the format from the previous volume within this series, having the four-parter first and then the two-parter second. Much like The Miniaturist, which was the first one-parter within Volume 1, we see the Doctor and Dodo land in what we see as modern-day Earth, something of which that couldn't have happened accurately back in the 1960s, when the first Doctor era did of course initially air on our TV screens. It's a brilliant novelty seeing the First Doctor interact with the modern-day tube line in London. Smartphones, as well as contemporary dialogue, it's a story that really evokes the normal reality of day-to-day -day life today, and something of which that you really don't feel like the First Doctor should be a part of, and yet this episode presents it really well. It's a really immersive lesson. Something of which that is safe to say, having the First Doctor subtly reference the COVID-19 pandemic is incredibly surreal. Except this version of London has been infiltrated by an unusual song or rhythm that is affecting the minds of the locals and people are going missing. We meet Daniel Diart, a conspiracy theorist podcaster obsessed with the otherworldly, brought to life by Henry Knott. Again, this provides a superb opportunity to let Stephen Noonan excel in his performance. Much like The Outlaws, I have very similar compliments to Volume 1. The sudden sparks of shouting, muddled speech, dialogue slip-ups, hums, giggles, his closeness and fondness to Dodo all evoke the First Doctor's personality in a really authentic way, whilst also presenting a clear separation between the portrayal of William Hartnell and Stephen Noonan. I think the use of modern settings and technology within the script also really helped to pave the way for this new era for the first Doctor and Dodo. It's a really unexplored era on screen, and from the off, Big Finish are creating something brand new. Personally, I see this era as almost an extension or a set of new adventures like we got to see with the seventh Doctor in the 90s, and as let's face it, what we did get to see on screen is incredibly minimal and didn't really give Dodo much development at all. Lauren Cornelius is great as Dodo. Her dynamic with the First Doctor is really excitable and warm. She clearly cares a lot for people and the world around her, and I like the fact that she's separated from the Doctor for quite a bulk of this story, allowing both actors to shine and do their own thing. But one thing that I will say is that this does also occur within the second episode of the set, and I don't know if it's a compliment or kind of a critique, it's kind of both at the same time, but I would love to see more scenes with both of them together, because it does happen at various points throughout the episodes, but they do always go off and do their own thing, and I simply enjoy both of them together that much. I would like to see a story where perhaps they aren't separated, simply because they act together so well. 
The sound design for the demon itself is really something. It's definitely a story that I recommend experiencing with decent headphones, as the song rather effectively digs into your mind, very much like how the people are kind of hypnotised throughout the story. The plot itself is relatively easy to follow, and I think it's a considerably linear plot, with not too many twists and turns, making it a very comforting, easy story to escape away into. Compared to Volume 1's The Miniaturist, that story was incredibly surreal, and I'm personally a little bit biased over loving it, as it's practically set in my hometown, which is something I really didn't expect going into that episode, so it's safe to say that this one had a lot to live up to, but I think it certainly manages as an episode within its own right, but I think The Miniaturist is still my personal favourite of this series so far. The demon's song isn't necessarily surreal, but I do love its use of other dimensions and the otherworldly, in a way that perhaps you wouldn't often see within original 60s Doctor Who, and you certainly wouldn't see a podcaster trying to get answers in those episodes either, so it's nice to see that we have something that's very traditional, but then with kind of a modern twist on it, using things that occur today, the likes of podcasting and the way that people interact with things through social media, the internet, I'll be honest, I think so far the one-hour stories have been the big selling point of this series. Perhaps the third volume could be a formation of three one-parters, that would be really nice, to maybe just add more variety to this series and more smaller adventures. I did mention this within my review of The Outlaws, and it's not exactly a criticism, but more an observation, and it's despite being a Time Lord from the distant future who has experienced highly advanced technology, the First Doctor has the 1960s period so closely wired into the character's makeup, and I love it. It makes the First Doctor who he is as a person, and I try not to think about it for too long as his seemingly lack of understanding in modern use of English and technology, as it feels like something that he kind of should be aware of but at the same time isn't, is basically someone who's just rattling around a tin can in space and time and seeing what happens and what kind of takes his curiosity, which I'm kind of alright with that, but at the same time, his personality is just very unusual to lots of other incarnations of the Doctor. He's a very amateur in a way, but he's still kind of defending the planet and he doesn't even realise it. If we continue this theme of the First Doctor gets introduced to modern things, I can't wait to see the episode that we have the First Doctor being introduced to the likes of Tinder, because I'm sure that will absolutely blow his mind. The second episode of the set is the Incheton Incident, as written by Nicholas Briggs. The First Doctor and Dodo arrive at a coastal town after some checks with the TARDIS go severely wrong. The town is surrounded by the army, as an unknown mysterious event has occurred, which has left many dead. But have aliens really fell from the sky? I believe this is the first box set within the First Doctor full cast audio adventures to not feature a pure historical, and as much as I love the format, it's always nice to have something new. This story is four parts at roughly 30 minutes each, allowing the characters and the plot to slowly come to life throughout. It's a little bit like the Big Finish monthly range. I often find 60s Doctor Who has a rather simple plot, or plots which are simply too confusing to even begin to try and get your head around them. This story falls within the category of a slower paced narrative, allowing us to explore the various characters we meet along the way such as Virginia, an American spy who is on the search for answers. Her relationship with the Doctor is an inconvenience to all involved, which makes for some great frustrated performances from Stephen Noonan. Again, the bluntness of the First Doctor really shines here. He feels really alien and otherworldly. It's also lovely hearing Genevieve Gaunt play a very powerful female character, something of which that is perhaps rarely seen within the First Doctor era on screen. As pointed out in the behind the scenes, I love the way the Doctor is very critical of Virginia at the very start of the story, and then two parts later he's placing small explosives around an army base to cause a distraction. He's funny, but very meddlesome, and kind of changes where he stands on things quite regularly. I also really like Dodo's relationship with Andrews, who is one of the members of the army featured within the episode, and when Dodo's kind of abducted within the early half of the story, their relationship kind of blossoms from there. It's a very human dynamic, and I like how that she applies her real-world knowledge to help him through his struggles. The setting evokes memories of the World Wars, which I believe is something that wouldn't have really been covered within 1960s Doctor Who back in the day, so it's nice to see Big Finish kind of covering things such as World War PTSD, it's nice that we have Big Finish kind of stamping their own interpretation on 60s Doctor Who adventures. 
I must admit, at parts, I did wonder where the story was going, as there was clearly alien involvement which was kind of influencing the behaviour of the humans, and yet the alien presence is rather absent until midway. There are a number of action sequences with the Doctor and Virginia on the run from the army in the early half, but after this, the story kind of progresses in a steady fashion. Those who like fast-paced audio drama stories may not get along with this one as much, as the episode does feel rather authentic to the period of the show, running at a rather slow pace. So for those of you that tend to avoid 1960s Doctor Who on screen, again, we'll probably not get along with this story as much as other audio drama adventures out there. Especially in the second half, I think perhaps a few additional obstacles were required to keep the story going at a decent pace. There were a few moments where my mind did kind of start to wander. But that is the thing with Big Finish and the many different ranges that they do. This is the first story that I've kind of encountered within this range so far, and it's of course the fourth story within the series that I've not instantly clicked with. And I think that that's currently a very good track record. So all the stories so far have done something different, have all been very respectable, but I just don't think I've clicked with this one as much as the other episodes within the series. But that doesn't change the fact that the series overall is still running at a very high standard of storytelling, so it was only a matter of time until I did encounter one that perhaps I didn't click with as much. Again, it does feel very much of the era. Towards the end of the story, there is a lovely speech which again really sells Noonan's performance, and is kind of similar to a number of the speeches that we get to see throughout 1960s Doctor Who that have of course gained a lot of fan popularity, such as Our Destiny is in the Stars, let's go and search for it in that lovely sequence, but again it kind of adds an element of authenticity to this episode to not just make it an audio drama adventure, it tries to somewhat capture the characteristics of 60s Doctor Who. There is something rather intense about seeing a traditional English town slowly descend into a war zone with the army everywhere, and yet them not being quite sure what's going on. They're trying to cover up this possible crashed spaceship, and I personally would have liked to see more of that maybe at the very beginning of the story, just add a bit more drama, maybe a few more explosions, but I think it's quite a nice novelty having an episode of Doctor Who that is for the most part set on location, something of which that wouldn't have happened again within this time period on screen. Naturally, of course, one of the benefits of having a series that consists of standalone stories with no plot arcs is that you have a lot of variety, and it is only something that you can come to expect, where you will have episodes that you like significantly more than others. So I think The Demon's Song is definitely my favourite episode of this set, but I do still quite like the second one, although for me it doesn't quite hit the mark in what I look for within a 1960s Doctor Who serial, and that is quite possibly down to the fact that I personally prefer the more historical stories, and naturally the historical stories are usually the four-parters, so perhaps I kind of hyped myself up hoping for a pure historical, and I didn't get a pure historical, and subsequently as a result my mind was maybe a little bit reluctant to like this story as much as what I perhaps would have preferred, but I still enjoyed what this episode had to offer, and ultimately I think what is very, very clear from this series is that so much dedication has gone into its production, as well as the portrayals. I think from every single level, the scripting, the writing, the directing, everything, the acting of course, is really trying to capture 1960s Doctor Who, whilst also adding to it a very contemporary way of producing Doctor Who media. And then of course we come to the whole idea of recasting, which has been something that I've discussed in previous reviews. For me, I think in the circumstances of this series, it's not really a recasting. Because this area is so small and brief within the TV show itself, and let's face it, it wasn't particularly written in the best possible way, and the dynamic between the First Doctor and Dodo wasn't exactly that existent, it's allowed Big Finish to essentially add the scaffolding to this era of Doctor Who and create what they want to create from this very small era on screen. So subsequently for me, it has been very easy to listen to this series and simply accept it, and again, I really do compliment Stephen Noonan's portrayal as the First Doctor, because it feels like so much care and attention to detail has gone into making it as authentic as possible, whilst also stamping a very personal interpretation onto said portrayal to make it different. It's not an impersonation, it's a new version of the First Doctor, while still keeping those personality traits very true to that Doctor that we know and love from 1960s Doctor Whom. 
Ultimately, if you are a Doctor Who fan who is strongly against recasting, then your decision is very, very easy. Do not buy this set. There is absolutely no point. You're just going to get angry. If you're someone who has a mind that is more open to the concept of recasting, then give this series a go. Have a look at the descriptions on the Big Finish website and see which box set interests you the most. Give it a go. See if you like it. See if you dislike it. Who knows? You won't know if you haven't tried it. It's definitely something that I recommend doing because because you never know, this might be your new favourite era of Doctor Who. Although the point very much stands that I mentioned at the very start of this review, please Big Finish, do more than one box set a year. I need more of Stephen Noonan and Lauren Cornelius as the first Doctor and Dodo, and waiting a year is not something I want to do. <laughs> So thank you very much for watching this review, I really hope you have enjoyed it. Do of course stay tuned on the host productions for regular Big Finish audio drama reviews. Have a nice day, I shall see you all next time.